All right, so the clock is ticking. In 21 days, the fate of the nation will be decided at the polls. And Kamala is trying to shift her campaign slogan from turn the page to unhinged and unstable, a reference to Donald Trump. And it's just like we talked about last week. The sitting vice president, the current vice president, can't run on a slogan of turn the page, just like the sitting vice president who serves alongside a man that 72% of Americans say is unfit for office, a man who is likely in the throes of dementia or something worse, can't run on a slogan of unhinged and unstable. A man who has had many moments like this more frequently than not. We're going to seize their yachts, their luxury homes, and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, yeah kleptocracy and klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> but these are bad guys. All right, that was two years ago. Imagine what it was like this morning at the White House, for example. Either way, it's rough to watch, especially when you factor in that Joe Biden is still the president, but Kamala might be worse. I don't think Kamala has dementia. I don't even think she's in cognitive decline. I think it's worse. I don't think Kamala was ever in cognitive incline. I just don't think she's a very smart person. And I don't say that to be mean. I say that because I really think we are watching the political version of The Wizard of Oz play out. When Dorothy and Toto finally pulled back the curtain, the political wizard isn't really a wizard at all. The wizard isn't this brilliant candidate the media has built up over the last several months. When you pull back the curtain, it's just Kamala Harris. Scared, unsure, unfit, in over her head, and perhaps just not all that bright. We know there's a duality to the nature of democracy. The importance of understanding uh, the, the duality, frankly, that exists in terms of our democracy. The nature of democracy is, is it's, there, there are two sides to it in terms of the nature of it. There's a duality. On the one hand, when democracy is intact, it is incredibly strong. On the other hand, it's very fragile. Okay, she's serious when she says that stuff. Uh, on that note, it turns out that Kamala Harris is more like Joe Biden than most of us ever realized. Yesterday, Kamala was accused of plagiarizing several passages of her 2009 book, Smart on Crime. And the New York Times went into full overdrive mode today. The Times brought in a plagiarin, uh, plagiarism expert, which is not a real thing. But they brought in a guy that works at a place called the Plagiarism Office today, which has got to be a really quiet office. His name is Jonathan Bailey. And Mr. Bailey concluded that, quote, the amount of plagiarism amounts to an error and not an intent to defraud. Did you hear what I just said? He called the plagiarism exactly what it is, plagiarism. So the guy the New York Times brought in to defend Kamala called plagiarism, plagiarism, in maybe the most hysterical piece that I've seen in quite a while from the New York Times. But people read this stuff every day and they buy it. They're like, of course, that's not plagiarism. By the way, does anyone else think it's ironic that Kamala wrote a book about crime, then stole someone else's work to complete her book about crime? <laughs> it's a cardinal sin for any author, stealing someone else's work. And we've got to call out this behavior anytime we see it because Kamala has been getting away with this type of thing her entire career. If Kamala was back at Howard University, where she went to college, she'd be kicked out immediately. Take a look at this. This is right from the Howard University website. Quote, plagiarism, to take and pass off intentionally as one own ideas and writings without attribution and without acknowledging the author. The penalties for doing that plagiarism at Kamala's alma mater. A more severe penalty, such as suspension from the university, may be imposed depending upon the nature and extent of the infraction. And that's how serious this is. And people of a certain age will probably remember that Joe Biden was forced to drop out of the presidential race for the first time when he ran for president back in 1988, after a much more honest media reported that Biden copied a speech from a little-known British member of parliament, almost word for word. Take a listen. Why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family ever to go to a university? Why am I the first Kinnock in a thousand generations to be able to get to university? 
Biden would drop out of the race not long after that and never run again. It took him 20 years until he ran again in 2008. He failed and became Obama's VP. And just like Joe Biden, when it comes to Kamala, it looks like plagiarism is a pattern. In an interview with Elle magazine not long ago, Kamala told a story about her parents at a civil rights march in Oakland back in the 1960s. Take a listen to how she described what happened. And then my mother would tell a funny story about how, like, one day she, and, and I was fussing, and, and, you know, and so I'm fussing and fussing. She, it, it's much cuter when she would tell the story, but she'd say, so then she would look down at me and, Kamala, what do you want? What do you want? And I looked back up at her and I said, freedom! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, freedom. It's a sweet story. The problem is that's not Kamala's story. Just like her boss in 1988, she stole that. It turns out she stole that story from Martin Luther King. In an interview in 1965 with Playboy magazine, Dr. King told the exact same story when he said, quote, I'll never forget the moment in Birmingham, Alabama, when a white policeman accosted a little girl, seven or eight years old, who was walking, and what do you want, asked the officer, and the little girl looked at him straight in the eye and answered, freedom. This probably explains why Kamala doesn't do a lot of interviews. She's impressive on paper, I guess, but there's just not that much there. What Democrats also can't seem to figure out right now is why Donald Trump, this extremely wealthy man who wears a full suit everywhere he goes, unless he's golfing, is polling at 27% with black men and 40% with Latinos. If those numbers hold, he's president. Democrats just can't figure out why Trump is so popular with working class Americans, the same people the Democrats have ignored for the last 50 years are starting to catch on, the same people that voted for Ronald Reagan in the 1980s, Reagan Democrats. And the reason is simple, it's authenticity. The Donald Trump that you see every day is the real Donald Trump. And people are almost instinctively attracted to that level of honesty in politics and in real life. And Democrats just don't get this, which is why they send Tim Walsh out to pheasant hunt. Tim Walls is headlining a voter engagement event tonight with black men. Uh, who better to connect with young black men than Tim Walls? <laughs> because apparently Michael Buble was unavailable. Tim Walls in an orange jacket uh, is not going to make men vote for Kamala. I'm sorry. And I don't know what's more scary. The fact that Kamala's top advisors thought that was a good idea or the fact that they actually let someone who clearly doesn't know how to hunt go out there and make a fool of himself for three hours. We looked into it, by the way. He was out there pheasant hunting for three hours, and they shot one pheasant. Pheasant. And as I said last night, I'm not a, a, much of a hunter. I'm not a hunter. I'm not a pheasant hunter. I'm not an expert. But that doesn't sound like they had a great day out there, three hours hunting. And that's what Democrats don't seem to get. Donald Trump is polling so well with so many different groups of people because Democrats have forced people, even people that shouldn't like Donald Trump and people that haven't voted for him before, to feel something for him. The assassination attempts, the lawfare, the absolute ridiculousness of what they've put him through over the last several years have made this election as much about a profound expression of emotion from voters as it is about everything else.